What's up, everybody? And Victoria here from the Disney Kingdom podcast. In this episode, we are going to be discussing Disneyland Paris, and basically now that they've kind of been pretty much been given the go ahead now to do the buyout, Disney have kind of filed a lot of paperwork recently. Um, it's pretty much they they are going to get full control over it this summer and stuff. Um, they have apparently got. Um, they have been offering two euros each to the people that have already got shares. Which is often a lot more than they earn. For there's a there's a big hold of sort of shareholders that have want to keep hold of the things because they've liked all the all the special. Part of also, I think they have been offered like ten years worth of discounts um, as a kind of like, you know, here's some discounts. Give us our shares back. Kind of thing. Yeah, basically, just yeah, that sounds about right. I wasn't entirely surprised because we did hear a little bit of murmurs back in february or january that this was a possibility so when i heard it was announced i wasn't at all surprised i was actually very happy because i think disneyland paris is the only forming mm. of the all the parts well, I really do. yeah well i think the trouble is is a lot i think when they went out and sort of they did the same thing like because they're doing it slowly in that, um, hong kong as well um they're slowly buying but they they're literally like the the Chinese government of store of Hong Kong government still got a massive share left. You know, and Disney have been buying back like literally a share a year kind of thing extra. Um, so but Disney, personally as a Disneyland Paris um, visitor, this idea is great because I feel like once it gets fully under control, Disney will want to invest in it properly. This will then be theirs. This will be all of their money. Is they don't have to go to the board meetings. They don't have to go to external people and ask. They you know they can control it. You know if, in some ways as well as like once it becomes part of the same company. You know if they're developing a ride for Hong Kong, they can then just use them. You know the theme parks, especially like the, the hotels in, in Paris. They have to pay Disney to use them. So the hotel companies or the Disney. Paris didn't tend to use the characters in the part in the hotels because they'd have to pay more money to Disney. Even though they're all part of the same, it was you know this is the thing with companies is it can get a bit complicated. Once it's all within the same thing, obviously it's going to be budgetary and all the rest of it. I mean we've heard in the past of like the video game they had to pay a licensing to the Imagineering for using the music for the Haunted Mansion or you know it's all money within the same company. And I mean if you've ever worked for a big corporation, this happens a lot anyway. But once it goes within the major corporation, I personally feel um, you're going to start seeing it presented better. You're going to start seeing new attractions, not necessarily straight away. I mean, it could take years, but then it becomes theirs. They've got an invested in treatment in treating it like they do in Florida or in Disneyland, because that's never been the case with their international um, parks. That's true. It's also good to note that this is the first international park fully owned by Disney because <clears throat> contrary to popular belief, like it's mostly like outside companies within that country mm. that run that part where Disney fully owns this one now. So it's yeah. really interesting. Well I think the thing is like where the the French government had to own a massive portion of it. You know, they they invested right. in it, you know, to bring jobs, to bring tourism and stuff. So Disney probably when they when they went to them it would be like, well, you know, you put into this, we'll put into this, it benefit you scratch my back, you scr I scratch yours. You know and but gradually over time, you know, governments and things change, you know, their, their priorities change and stuff. And, you know, if they can be offered some money to get out of a deal, you know, because it was quite a big thing really for Disneyland Paris from the idea of um, it being run by an American company. That was kind of, that's been their, one of the little sticky points because, but I think eventually they turned around and like Disney would have probably have been like, well, give us all control or we're just not going to invest and we'll just let it dry up. And it's better that it's its own fully. You no, know, it's like Shanghai. Shanghai. I'm not entirely sure if Disney completely fully opera own it the same way. The government, Chinese government might have had to have a, a say in it. Same thing for Hong Kong and obviously Tokyo as well. It, that's run by a separate company, and they then have to pay Disney royalties. And it is a really strange thing. But when they a lot of these parks got built, it was a different time for Disney. You know, sometimes you're talking twenty, thirty, thirty odd years ago when Disney weren't quite quite have as much cash as they do now that's true i mean disney has grown very largely as a company they almost so much now like 
to the point where they can even have E23 and show different aspects of what they run from video games and television. So, I mean, them being able to do this, I think, is very, very good step forward for them. Mm. Just so they can, like, showcase more of their uh, IP. Yeah, I mean, looking here, I just did a quick <laughs> search there. Um, Shanghai Resort, um, 43% of the com- of the resort is owned by Disney. 57% is owned by the Shanghai um, Sherry Group, which is a joint um, op- company owned by the Shanghai government. So there again, see, in order to get in there, Disney had to do these deals with these governments to get in there, because otherwise they just wouldn't be able to go in, because the governments want to ha- have part of it. From Disney's point of view, getting to China was good. Obviously, getting into, into Europe... Um, you know, they've kind of done that, you know, we're, we're, most of us Europeans are used to, you know, we've, we've all grown up with Disney the same way, pretty much from the 50s and 40s in the same way that Disney did in America. But now it's fully operational. It wouldn't surprise, you know, they're going to have to invest some money in it. But, I mean, some, some American fans might be like, well, we don't want, you know, all the money should go back into the American parks rather than Shanghai and stuff. But the world's a big place. And the thing is as well of, you know, Disney are no longer just looking at their own little backyard. You know, there's a whole world out there full of customers and they want to try and get out to as many of them as possible. And I do think bringing Paris back in line also means then that they can benefit from if you're building a brand new ride A and you can put it in three parks or two parks, you're cutting your costs and making it easy to bring them in. Yeah, I, I agree completely. I feel like, Mainly just because Paris has suffered due to, you know, this economy and, you know, all the terrorism that's been happening over there recently. Well, not recently, but, like, in the past few years. It hasn't really helped either. No, I mean, from, <laughs> I mean, for, like, me, you know, here in England, you know, when I see an, when we see an advert for TV, all we ever see promoted is Paris and Florida. We, if you see the California tourism video um, advert... Disney pops up for, ten, for two, three seconds, but we only ever promote those two things. You know, if you're in Tokyo, you get a different one. Obviously, depending on where you are, you'll get different things. Um, I think even in the U.S., you know, depending on which side of the Mississippi on, depends on how much promotion they run on traditional media and stuff about those going to the parks. But having full control over it now means that Disney can, in some ways, focus down a bit and get it sorted and maybe... And also sometimes governments sometimes aren't very good at running businesses. You know, they, they, you know, if you've ever tried to do anything with civil servants and all the rest of it, they work on a different schedule to businesses. Businesses work very differently, you know, money talks and they work differently. And now just getting rid of so much red tape and bureaucracy is going to really just, even just that will really help and ring down the costs. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I was speaking to a friend not too long ago about prices. Matter of fact, it was when I went to Pandora. We were talking about it. And she said the prices are just ridiculous for Disneyland Paris, especially for what you get. Yeah, they are pretty cheap at the moment. But there again, they they need to get us in there. I mean, they're still the number one um, destination in Europe. So it's still very, very big and they're still getting a lot of people there. But, you know, there's that side effect as well of like Disney no longer have to Disneyland Paris no longer have to pay Disney to be there. So they that all that money then, rather than going back into, you know, all of it now going into Disney, and so it gets shared around a little bit. And maybe as well, cast members will then be employed by Disney Direct, you know. And I just think in general, it's going to be improvement. It can't be any worse because the, develop, the investment into the park has never been great. Hollywood Studios needs a massive overhaul. We've got Mar- yeah. Give us all the Marvel stuff since Florida can't have it. <laughs> I mean, just about. That's honestly what a lot of people on Twitter are thinking. They're thinking the entertainment is going to be upgraded immensely. They think, honestly, they think Marvel's coming, which I would not be surprised if it did because, mm. I mean, we can't have it. Yeah. So one of the parks should. Well, I mean, it's like, you know, say, for example, the Iron Man attraction, which opened up in Holly- in Hong Kong. You know, there's something like that, or even just, you know, soaring, you know, anything like that, which, you know, Essentially, they can they can reduce the costs because they can share it out to all the different places a lot easier. Whereas, say for example, Hong Kong Disneyland build an attraction. Well, maybe that's being built by that company, and then Disney have to buy it off them, and it's so much more complicated. And like now, it could be a lot easier to do. And just nothing's going to change in terms of you know some people maybe get 
too carried away and they think every single problem at Disneyland Paris is going to be gone overnight. Disney's just going to wave a magic wand and throw loads of money at it. That's not going to be the case. It's going to take probably decades. But now it does mean now it's no longer the one of the little side cousins. Now it's actually essentially now become um, it could become the little the little brother you know of Disneyland because now it's officially completely owned it rather than just you know a relative. Right, exactly. So I mean, I feel like like you said it's going to take time, but I feel like they're going to really improve it mm. like a lot. Yeah, and I hope as well that you know in some ways you know it's like the whole thing of like where Disney's been spending the money, getting full control over their own products. They need to do it with Marvel as well. They you know there's some issues there that they need to sort out. Um, and getting the house back in order sometimes is probably better than the thing is we all love new stuff and we all like new things but sometimes they've got to get those things in order before you know maybe now now paris has been purchased they will start you know and shanghai got finished now it's time to start you know, maybe throwing it into epcot or going after some of hong kong or japan and buying some of those bits and pieces back we just don't know uh, i mean this could honestly be a sneak peek a sneak peek at a trend, but only time will tell. I doubt we'll hear anything about Disneyland Paris as far as anything new at D23 because it's just, it's too soon. I but, yeah, I mean, actually, to be honest, in some ways, um, and it's even things like that, you know, Disney can start doing events and stuff there a little bit easier and you know, it's going to become, you know, maybe they will start looking at it as their European hub a little bit better than what it has been up to now because there's the same thing as well of like what happens with the Marvel movies. Why would you want to push something which you don't, you are going to make money from, but you're never quite going to make all the money and you've got to go through all these extra hoops when you can, you know, you can put it in your other business and not have to worry. And, you know, even on a small scale with me personally, you know, when you had a couple, when I had a couple of different sites, you know, one site takes precedent over the other ones because you maybe have more, more, it's yours. Whereas when you're, subletting or you're doing some details it's like well i'm not putting all my money in there because when they're equal you spend differently yeah that's true it's like it's like certain things take take more precedence yeah but no definitely looks good i'm really excited i think this is great i think this is exactly what paris needs i think it's a it's an opportunity for them to kind of break away you know this whole thing of like shareholders and all the rest of it there was a lot of expectations a lot of almost not even so much expectations, but a lot of um, the idea that they could, that they, they were owed something by being a shareholder, you should get free parking or you should get more discount. Whereas like, no, you just brought a share. You didn't buy the, the property, but hopefully now was it fully, you know, going through, cause there's basically this, this is going through now. This is, there is, there is no chance this won't, you know, they've already got 95% and now this is just going to be the thing of right. We in a, a forced buyout of those people that have already got them. Oh. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, oh, for those who don't know, they um, Disney needed to buy ninety five percent of the shares mm. in order to buy it out, mm. and they've t- taken it off the stock market, so it can't be yeah. traded anymore. No, it's definitely good. I mean, the th- thing is, well, I think there's a lot of people who, are, you know, you've if you were going into it as a stock, you never would have brought it because it wouldn't. It's never performed well enough to actually be to make you any money. But I think a lot of like Disney fans brought it in the hope that you know it would eventually be. You know, stocks and shares go up and down, and unfortunately, you know, some people hope that these things go up a lot more than they actually will do. But nevertheless, I'd love to know your thoughts on this as well. You can always get in touch with us using comments or social medias. Check us out over at thiskingdom.com. And Victoria, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter at he calls me PP and Instagram he calls me Pineapple Pepper. And on that note, guys, so thank you very much for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, and we shall see you guys soon. Later. Bye.